Not gonna complain. It's one of those deals where I'm in a I'm traveling in a different town, and um, had some now space to spend until I move on again in the morning. So here I am. So if any of you folks out there have any questions regarding correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, quantum grammar or anything related to that, feel free to pop them in the chat. I'd appreciate it and I'd definitely do my best to answer. So you know a little bit about me, I've been teaching this grammar technology for over six years to hundreds of people all over the earth. It's not something that uh, your average Joe can latch onto only the most motivated and most determined folks will actually learn this. Because it does take a lot of work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But everybody's got to start somewhere. So if this is your starting port, welcome. The best place to start with anything is where you are. You know, right where you are. Corey, there are over 900, 900, I'll say it a third time, 900 free correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar videos on my YouTube channel. There are playlists on my YouTube channel. So we have a parse playlist, a syntax playlist, a correct sentence structure playlist, a mini class playlist, a psychology playlist. You can start anywhere you want to. It's completely up to you. However, if you want guidance, if you want an actual tutor, you're more than welcome to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. You can request a consultation. Please include your full correct name. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I will look at each other eye to eye, face to face. You can ask me whatever you want and we'll see if this is something you really want to do. Because I can take you from point A to B to C to D to however far you want to go, I can take you there. I've been doing this for over six years. Hundreds of students. So I've developed a, a pretty tight curriculum. And for those that actually follow through and learn it, it's very successful. You don't have to really forget everything you know about language or grammar. It's correct sentence structure is actually very, very simple. It's so simple. And when people get it, their mind is blown at how simple it actually is. There are just rules that you have to follow. And there are no exceptions to those rules. A lot of folks have problems with that simply because in the educational system we were brought up in, we were taught that, well, there are exceptions to rules and, uh, you know, there's more than one meaning for a word and everything's open for interpretation and blah, blah, blah. With correct sentence structure, all of that's out the window. It's one word, one meaning. So take the sentence... Uh, can you get me a can of tuna fish? Can you get me a can of tuna fish? In that sentence alone, you see the word can, C-A-N. It has two different meanings in that sentence. Can you get me a can of tuna fish? So in one aspect, it's a physical thing, a can of tuna fish. 
And then the other aspect, it's can you, as in a non-tangible type of uh, condition of state, whereas a can of something is tangible. It's physical. You can hold it in your hand. But can you get me something that's different? Correct set structure eliminates that. You would have to have one meaning for the word can, and it would spread across all of your contracts, and that is why it is so powerful. And that is why it is so successful when educated folks use it. I guess a good start would be learning the mathematical structure. Well, I can tell you that in like 15 seconds. One plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. One plus two equals three, you check that mathematical equation by writing it backwards. Three minus two equals one. What's the difference between the two? The factors, the three, the two, the one, they remain the same. They maintain the same values. The equal sign is neutral. It maintains its same value. What's different? The plus and the minus enables the mathematical interface to happen. And correct that in structure, the positionals, for, of, with, and by, there are four positionals. For is congruent with by, just like plus is congruent with minus. Of is congruent with with, just like multiplication is congruent with division. That's the mathematical interface. I just explained it to you. There you go. Merry Christmas. Very simple. I know, I can say it's very simple, uh, but to the beginner, the person just dipping their toe into this, it probably doesn't make very much sense. But again, that's why I provide workshops and that's why I leave my email address in my bio. And that's why I say, if you wanna really, if you are serious about this and you wanna learn it, contact me. Shoot me an email, we'll set something up. We'll see if you're serious about it. Because you're not, I mean, I can't say you're not gonna learn it in a comments field on TikTok, but it's very, very unlikely that you're gonna learn much of anything in a comments field on TikTok. I mean, related to this grammar. You might learn other things, but grammar, it's, it's just, it's something that uh, has to be done in a classroom setting. That's what I found. When I started learning this in 2017, the summer of 2017, uh, I had to have a tutor. I definitely had to have a tutor. You believe you sent me an email before. Interesting. I have to check my records because, uh, Corey, I keep meticulous records. So if you sent me an email, I definitely have you in my logbook. But I don't have access to that right now, so I'll just take your word for it. So why did you start learning this? Well. Here's the thing, I was sick and tired of being raped by the fiction system, the legal system and all that stuff. I was sick and tired of it. I started trying to learn common law and things like that, but that was so much information, it was overwhelming. And then I came upon Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, and uh, he started explaining correct sentence structure, and I was like, wow, the concept of this is so simple. And in an innate, <laughs> and in an innate, an innate feeling in me manifested and something told me, this is what you gotta do. This is what you gotta learn. You learn this, you won't have to learn anything else. And that was true. So I was able to learn this and I was able to stop the trespass of the fiction system, the bureaucratic trespass of the fiction system. That's why. I, um, my initial volition was to learn it to, number one, get closure on the grammar, number two, to teach it to others, which I've done, three, to write correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, contract, which I've done, so I've accomplished all of my goals that I set out with. I have been studying law for three years, and it's not doing much for me. Well, that's the thing about the laws and the legalities. They're always changing, always changing. Jeez, if you take any state, state of Pennsylvania, state of Florida, state of California, and you look at the traffic laws alone, the books are like this thick. It's ridiculous. Why do you need that? <laughs> Why do you need it? So the system can continuously screw you over with their legalese 
and continually spin you up with their wordplay. That's why folks like attorneys and, and lawyers go to school for seven plus years so they can learn that language. That's why they want you to have an attorney when you walk into those foreign vessels in dry dock because you're too stupid to know their language because they're all a member of a club. Like George Carlin said, they're all a member of, members of this big secret club, the Bar Association. Well, it's not so secret, but it's a private club and you're not a member of it, so you don't know it. That's why you have to have a member of that represent you. There's nothing fair about the legal system. And they all bound down to that uh, individual in the black dress on the third Master Mason plane. That's a violation of the Plain Language Act. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Corey. What is an act? Are you putting on an act? Are you an actor? Put an F in front of that. Then you have fact. Now you're in a completely different domain. I don't participate with such things as uh, acts, statutes, codes, laws, rules, regulations. I, I don't participate with any of that because it's all fiction bullshit. It comes down from an authority. The only folks that have authority over you are the ones that you allow to have authority over you, that you give consent to. That's why I don't participate with the concept of acts or the concept of rights. Rights come from an authority. So, I mean, it's a personal choice. If you want someone to have authority over you, that's your choice. I choose not to. I choose to be my own authority. Rights are for folks that want to be governed. I govern myself. I flip my camera around because I'm tired of looking at myself. I'm trying to self-govern, but they don't want to hear it. Well, if you're using their language, if you're using their rules, their acts, their regulations, their codes, well, of course they're not going to hear it. They still have authority over you because you're submitting to them. That's where correct sentence structure comes in. Correct sentence structure can give you the tools to govern yourself. Then they don't have jurisdiction over you. You have jurisdiction over yourself and you have stewardship over your contracts. That's the beauty of correct sentence structure because if you continue to use adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, fictitious, conveyance, or grammar, they will always win. Always. Because that's their domain. They created it. They can change it if they want to. You're at the mercy of using what they create and what they created. That's like those folks out there that are trying to protest this, that, or the third. If you really think about it, what are they protesting? What are you basically doing when you protest? So you have a set of rights and a set of rules that have been handed down by your government. Now all of a sudden, you feel like those rights and rules are being violated. So now, you're basically protesting, crying, whining, begging, pleading to the government, to the authority to perform on their end. It's like, why did you stop giving me my rights? I need my rights. Here, please, give me my rights. And so it's kind of like a little, to me, I picture a little kid, right? Who's allowed to have cookies every day at five o'clock in the afternoon. They're allowed to have cookies every single day at five o'clock. They look forward to having these cookies at five o'clock. And then Friday comes along and all of a sudden there are no cookies and the kid can't have the cookies. So now the kid starts protesting. Why didn't you give me my cookies? It's my right to have cookies at five o'clock every day. Why didn't you give me my cookies? So the parent's like, well, because I don't have any, I don't want to. And then the little kid keeps whining and crying. I know I want my cookies. You gotta give me my cookies, give me my cookies back. It's kind of like the same thing. 
that's the way I look at it anyways. Protesting, although it is serious, you know, for some folks, and I, I honor that, it is basically whining. And think about it, when you go into foreign vessels in dry dock, when you go into those courtrooms, what, what are you doing? You're entering a plea. What is a plea? It's a cry for help. You're begging, you're on your knees. Please, I'm pleading with you. Come on, man. Seriously, think about it. Why are folks okay with that? I don't know. I mean, maybe it works for some folks. Maybe they like to plead and beg. I don't. I don't. And here's the other thing about it, and it's a... Uh, Again, if you check out my YouTube channel, Corey, you can find the psychology playlist. There's actually a playlist called Psyche. And if you check out those videos, I go in great depth on this stuff. You never really want to refuse anything. All right? Because that, I mean, there are times when, yes, you will have to do that if it comes down to it, like it's an immediate situation and you have to refuse something, okay, well then you have to refuse it. But if, if you're in no immediate danger, the prudent thing to do in the context of correct sentence structure is never to refuse anything, never say no. Instead, you'd give a positive performance and you would convey that your volition is to be agreeable, you're not trying to cause anybody any harm. You're peaceful and neutral, honorable and graceful, with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. But you want to do it correctly. You want to do it with correctness. You want to know why you're doing it, why it is this way. And then you move forward. And if you do that, they are not, they, meaning the fiction system, are not going to want to explain what it is they're doing. They're not going to want to give you closure. So therefore, they'll vacate. They will leave you alone. They will stop messing with you. Again, that is in the context of correct sentence structure if you are using correct sentence structure. If you're not using correct sentence structure, if you are using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, well then, it's a crapshoot. It's like rolling the dice. I mean, there's no telling what's gonna happen. You don't really have any control over what happens. But if you're using correct sentence structure, that's different. They don't want to acknowledge that they are fraudulently accessing your estate. Uh, again, you're dealing with using fiction against fiction. So if you really get down to brass tacks there, Corey, estate is no contract anyways because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word, and it all comes down to the grammar. That is the key element of correct sentence structure communication, parsing syntax grammar. That's why grammar comes at the end of that word correct sentence structure, communication, parsing syntax, grammar. It is the authority, authority comes at the end. So if you have authority over your grammar, you would not use words like a state or any, anything like that. You would only come with the facts and you would come with strong facts and you would have your own dictionary, your own correct sentence structure dictionary. All your terms and conditions, your styles manual, everything written by you. Because think about it, if you want to have authority over something, the word author is part of the word authority. So you must be the author of your documents. If you're using a Webster's 1828 dictionary as meaning for your words, then Webster's 1828 is the authority of your words. Because you've taken it from Webster's. But if you create your own dictionary, you are the authority. Hope that makes sense. That would be self-governing authority. 
being the author, that's an eye opener. Yes, you have to be the author. Using templates and copy and pasting things, I mean, maybe at one point in time that may have worked for people, but it does not work anymore, to my knowledge. To my knowledge, you, you must cultivate your knowledge to have closure on your grammar, on the documents that you use. You take full accountability for it. If you use someone else's template or someone else writes your documents, then they are the authority of the documents, not you. Especially, all right, this comes into play when, like I get emails from folks who are in the middle of losing their houses or their children or they're in the middle of a divorce or something and they want me to take on their case, they want me to write their documents. Of course, I could charge literally thousands of dollars, probably three or four times what an average attorney would charge people to do that. But I know that it's probably not going to do any good. Why? Because I'm not there. I'm writing the documents, sending it to the people, and the people use it, but they didn't author the documents. They have no freaking idea what it says. They have no idea how to use correct sentence structure or how to syntax or anything. And so it all falls to pieces. And then who gets blamed? I get blamed. The only way that would work is if I were there physically. If I was there physically and I was uh, transshipping in the documents that I wrote, I have to take jurisdiction over that case. And there's no one in the world, really, that would be willing to pay that kind of money, that kind of value to someone like me to take jurisdiction over their case and walk into a foreign vessel and dry dock and take command of the situation. There just isn't. So that's why I say it's a simple solution. Just learn it yourself. Get serious, take classes, learn it. Be your own authority, be your own federal judge, bank banker, postmaster, whatever you wanna be, port authority. Do it yourself. Why rely on me or anybody else? Just do it. The venue is there. It's just up to you to take those first steps, invest those values, and do it. Well, this was super fun. Thank you, Corey. I'm going to look to see if you have actually emailed me. I believe you. I'm, I'm not doubting you, man. Not at all. But just for my own peace of mind, I'm going to check and see if you've emailed me. Corey Jones. Uh, again, if you want to apply for a workshop, just shoot me another email. Because although you've said you've emailed me, I'm not sure we had a consultation. The next step is a consultation. Because it's all about community, man. We got to look at each other face to face, eye to eye. This comment section texting stuff might be good for the younger generation, but for me, it's got to be eye to eye, face to face. Basically, you know, even though it's just a video chat, it, it's more valuable than, you know, just typing in a comments field. But, uh, thank you very much, everybody who watched. Appreciate it. I will catch you in the next one.